In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, we can scroll down. Let's start in verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Witchcraft divination is an abomination to the Lord. Now, over here at Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, we can get the definition of divination. The art or practice that seeks to foresee or foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge usually by the interpretation of omens or by the aid of supernatural powers. Now, for those of you that wonder, well, how could the church become so corrupt? This is how it happens. When alleged leaders of the church bring the actual witchcraft in and disguise it as Christianity, that's how it happens. You're looking at Pastor Chris Reed, who is the lead pastor and the president of Morning Star Ministries. And what you're about to see him do is actual witchcraft, actual divination. Okay, Heather's joined us now. You ready? Sure. All right, let me bring her on here. Hi, Heather. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? I got the, there's a name, something to do with like an L. Um, I don't know if it's like a middle name or a maiden name, but it's like an uh, starts with an L. I don't know exactly um, what what that would mean. And also, I've got like a there's like a I want to say like a Tim maybe or a Timothy, uh, a Dwayne, um, like the name Camp. I don't know why Camp C A M P if that makes uh, sense to you. And something to do um, with May. I want to say May twenty second. What's May twenty second? Is there twenty first or twenty second? Something like that. May 22nd is my birthday. Okay. Also, um, like, I, I don't know. And, like, uh, yeah, Tell us what the names were. Dwayne, Dwayne's my husband. Okay. And the L is my middle name is Lynn. 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 Okay. I, I, I didn't wow. quite. Yeah. I, I thought she was straight facing you too. She was like, mm -hmm, I'm not giving away nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a believer, I assume. Yes. Yeah. So, so what do you think about prophetic ministry? What's your thoughts about it? Um, this is, it, uh, this is all new to me. I was raised Baptist from the time I was five until I just started going to a Pentecostal church. Like, three oh years yeah. Ago. Oh, you're all messed up now. So I, I, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been told that I'm baptized in the spiritual gifts and I can, um, I know I have tongues. I pray in tongues to God and I've been told I have a lot more, but I don't know if I'm afraid to use them, but I do dream a lot and I think I have visions. And That's I what I was. I was going to tell you all this. That's why I, I was. Oh, yeah, going to okay, ask so. you, What do you think about if that was to happen? So, gotcha. What was the camp? What was the camp one? Oh, I'm sorry. I um, camp Blue Diamonds out the road from us. Okay. What is it? Camp there's a Blue Diamond. Camp there's a camp Blue Diamonds down. up the road. Yeah. Yes, about like hey. two minutes. Okay. So, like, what has it got to do with something like I see you running around a globe? Like, I see you running, like, on a globe. I live on Globe Run Road. <laughs> Globe Run. Wow. <laughs> so I was literally, I saw you running on, your feet were running on a globe. And I, I it's like, I, I, I don't know. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> so is there like a, a, a Haley? That's my daughter. Okay. Um, wow. Well, I really feel like that it's just really going to, the, the gifts are just really, you done, you done told what I was going to say. I mean, you have done said it about the dreams, the gifts. And I really do feel like that you have a strong prophetic anointing on your life. I really, uh, like the name, is there a, like a, I want to say a Judy or a something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's my mother. <laughs> That's your mother. And okay. She, and she is very skeptical and because she's Baptist, very, very strict Baptist. And I've been trying to show her everywhere in the Bible where it's showing, you know, the spiritual gifts. And I mean, she's a very godly woman and, you know, loves Jesus. And she's just 
it, she's not understandable about the baptism of the gifts. Well, you tell Judy, okay, in love, you tell her that I said to tell Terry, Mark, Melinda, and Kara that the gifts are still for today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Terry is my father. Mark is my brother that is a recovering drug addict. That was the prophesy, or I'm sorry, the prodigal son that just came home. It's on oh. you right now. The spirit's on you right now. Lord, I'm believing you. I'm believe something special also is going to happen. I don't know. September 11th is a very sad day, but something special is going to happen for you on September the 11th. I keep hearing that. That's my hus husband and I's anniversary. Ah. Now, regardless of what you think you just saw, we can right at the top conclude one thing is for sure. This is not biblical. This is not of Christ. It is the enemy of Jesus Christ. This is not prophecy. Now, when you heard this guy, I'll go through the list of what he told this woman. He told her, her birthday, her husband's name was Dwayne. He pretended like, well, there's a, there's an L, is there someone L? And it was Lynn, uh, which was her middle name. He then said, well, you know, I can only assume you're a believer. That he didn't know. Then he said, uh, well, he named that, uh, apparently there was a camp down the road. He said, well, I, I see you running on a globe and, well, she lives on Globe Street. Then he proceeded to name off by name Haley, Judy, Terry, Mark, Melinda, and Kara, all of which were family members. Named them by name. He then finished it by saying, There's something about 911, which of course she confirmed was her anniversary. So there was a lot of information there. And he was 100% correct. Now, most of you, including me, are more than likely knowing that he got this off of social media. He's kind of taken a page out of Sean Bolt's uh, program. But it really doesn't matter because it is still unholy. Prophets, true prophets of God, don't question for their information. God gives true prophets the information, and they speak the word of God to whomever they may be speaking to. So, again, remind yourself, this is a church leader doing this. A church leader. Whether you believe this was true or not, it still falls under the category of divination which is an absolute abomination in the eyes of our Lord. I also want to point out one more thing. Everything that he told her was information that she already knew. Her house number, her street name, her family members, her anniversary. This was not prophetic. This was no new knowledge from God. Clearly, I'm stating the obvious. So how did this edify her life? How did this improve or help her faith? It didn't. Even when he did share at the end, uh, he prefaced that with, well, I feel that, and it was very vague, I feel this, I feel that. But this was nothing that she didn't already know. It's just pure silliness. It's all your name, and I uh, feel like that's something you've desired and just need some encouragement and something that you've you know, prayed for and asked for. And I, I see the name. It's like, I see something like that. You have the word, the word story, a story to tell. That was uh, my maiden name. Pardon me? My maiden name is story. Okay. Uh, also, now this may sound different. Like I, I, I saw, it was just like, it was a sleeve. Um, but it was like, it was a sleeve of, I don't think it was a shirt. It was, it was like it maybe tattoos. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's, ha. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got wow. one. So. <laughs> how, how long have you had? The, what does that stand? What does that represent? I'm asking for a reason. Mostly my mama. Yeah, there's a there's a um, a real void I just feel in your life and a deep sense of uh, uh, 
void and emptiness and sometimes it's even depression you know just it, it, it just uh, affecting you um and it's like you know you just don't want to forget her and that's why she's literally you know on your on your uh, on your on your arm there it's um was she a believer at the end she was yeah there's something to do with like uh, june 28th my birthday was there someone in the house that's walking up there that like a chase maybe yeah that's my son was that him that walked up this is, is that him that yeah. you chase get down here so they can say you buddy pastor, pastor okay. chris just called your name I didn't even know you. I had no way of knowing you'd be on this. You just walked right up, but uh, that's cool. That's cool. So, um, how, how old will you be this November? Uh, 19. Say 19. Nineteen. On the second? Is it the second or third or right around there? On the fifth. Uh, okay, fifth. Uh, November fifth. Yeah. Well, not bad for somebody just walking up on the <laughs> <laughs> walking up on the. Uh, um, well, I didn't even know you'd be on here. So you know that that's supernatural when yes, uh, is. somebody just walks right up in the video that you come on and I called her name and, and <laughs> you know, in November, um, do you have a, is there like someone, so what I said, is it Chase? Is yes. that right? Yes. His name's Chase. Okay. Like I see, it's like Chase driving on, on a road or something. Chase. Yeah. Drive. We live on Chase Drive. <laughs> so your son's, your son's name is Chase and yeah, you live on Chase Drive and I see a, I see a highway sign that says 69. 69. What's 69? That's our 69. Oh, yeah, that's our address. <laughs> I'm trying to think what it is. Yeah, oh, that's our address. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 69 Chase Drive, and there's something like a, is there another son, or, or is there yes. like something with a G? Don't tell me. Mm -hmm. Something with a G. <sighs> Help me, Holy Spirit. Gage, maybe? Uh, yeah, got it right. Chase, I want to say to you, I feel like that, uh, so first off, I address the void in your mom's heart that's led to sadness and depression. I feel like that the Holy Spirit is prophetically healing that right now in you. No one or nothing will ever be able to replace her, but you've, you've kind of went through some loneliness uh, and other, even other relationships. And I feel like the Holy Spirit's saying that he's going to be a comforter to you, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And, and something there's about Chase is chasing something or someone. And uh, I just want to tell you, Chase, to chase after God more than anything else. All right. You may detect some anger in my voice here because this guy is a godless wolf as he does the exact same thing as psychics do he preys on the emotions of gullible people and it's atrocious look at her crying there uh, but let's run through what he said he got her maiden name he talked about her sleeve tattoos, and uh, which clearly you saw the text that I put in there. It's the same, you know, when, when psychics go fishing for information and they hit on something, uh, depending on what they hit on, they can expand with fantastic guessing information. She told him, I got these tattoos because of my mom. And then obviously anybody who's a good deceiver like uh, Chris Reed here, he would know to expand on that. And, and he did, and he brought her to tears. And what that means is now he's got her like putty in his hands. And she believed him. Look at her crying, it's, it's atrocious. Just an abomination. But he also called out her mom's birthday uh, her son's name was Chase, and they just happened to live on a street with, by the same name, Chase Street. Uh, for some reason, he didn't know Chase's birthday, though. Maybe that wasn't on his Facebook, or he didn't know his age. He then named their house number, and then uh, somebody named Gage. I forgot what it was. But what these uh, pretend prophet psychics do is they absolutely create a scenario to where fascination draws out delight, emotional delight. You, you're low and then you come high. And then if I forward this, you can see uh, she's, well, let me see. They get happy here. You can see Chase back there smiling. They're amazed by this guy. 
but it's all manipulation. And again, whether he did get this information online, which would definitely be my guess, um, even a bad actor like Chris Reed gains the approval of the victim. And it's just, again, it's horrifying. This guy is an abomination and he's evil for doing this. But the most troubling part about this, and then I'm going to move on, is he's brought this into the church. Now, fascination with the victims, the victims, they're going to want more. This is what happens. They want more. They want more and more because this was so fun. It's a supernatural experience. Their emotions ran everywhere and they want more. And they're going to get more if they go down that road and it's going to get more and more evil. This is how it works. This is divination. So next, we're going to show you the Clown Prince tombstone, uh, who also wants in on this psychic divination. And sadly, it's, you know, it's not enough that his resume is filled with blasphemy, with godlessness, with false prophecy. He's going to add divination to this. So we're going to watch this clip. It's about three minutes long. Here we go. Now there's somebody in this room while she's ministering to this side. Somebody in this room, you had a grandmother or you had a somebody in your family close to you. And the name was Myrtle. You need to come down here right now. I don't know if it's a grandmother. I don't know if it's an aunt but, or something, but you need to come right now. Her name was Myrtle. Hallelujah. Just come down and stand right here just a moment. The Lord is going to do something. Hallelujah. Two people right here. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was your, who was it to you? Your great aunt. And who was it to you? Your grandmother, great grandmother, grandmother. You said your aunt? Okay. I'm gonna ask you something. Was was your aunt was she a godly woman? Yes. What about your great grandmother? to you was the, were, was she a godly woman okay. and what about you yeah. this is what I I'm hearing and this is what I heard I've never had a word like this before that myrtle is the Hebrew name Hadassah. And those of you that she was godly, there was an anointing there, but there was an anointing present, and the Lord said this. Now, I'm just going to say this. He said, there is an anointing, and, and I'm not calling anybody into ministry. I'm just telling you what I hear. But there is an anointing on your life that was not picked up for deliverance for people around you. And the Lord wants you to have that. And if you will reach up and receive that now, He will give that to you. And you will be able to do it with tenderness and love and just speak the word to people. And deliverance, the, the anointing for deliverance will be there. And so remember this day, Lord, you called them down here. How could I have known these things unless you said these things? And Lord God, I ask you to let that anointing rest upon each one of them now. And Lord God, yes, I will tell them. I will tell them. The Lord said this is a unique thing. And it was something that Myrtle should have picked up, but did not pick up. Godly or not godly. 
They did not know. It's just that simple. But the Lord said, you know. And this was something he's trying to get into your family. Something he's trying to get into your heritage. And there's one of you that needs to forgive Myrtle. And I don't know which one of you that is, but go ahead and do that now. Is there someone in this line that you would admit that, that I need to forgive her? Who, here and here. See, the Lord, only the Lord could know this. Go ahead and forgive them right now. Just forgive the hurt. And that anointing that was intended will begin to rise within you and operate within your life. I have to say that to witness this slaughter is truly something to behold. Robin Bullock has no conscience and he has no fear of the living God. As he utterly abuses and destroys people's lives with this nonsense. And again, I can't say too much on top of what you saw or what I put in several texts up there. This man is a manipulator. He is a deceiver. And now, again, to his resume, he can add that he is one who practices occult divination. Because, again, this is not prophecy. This is a psychic who's gone fishing for information. Only, I don't believe he counted on six people showing up. So you heard the nonsensical ramblings of a lunatic, of a diviner. This man has brought it. This man, as a leader of a church, has added this witchcraft to his resume. He's added it to the itinerary. He is absolutely atrocious. And Robin, if you're listening, you will not get away with this forever. For there are true prayer warriors out here, true followers of Jesus Christ, who are praying, actively praying against you every day, that God will bring down your ministry of witchcraft. Now, the last clip that I'm going to show you is from a live stream I did about five months ago, where I exposed Amanda Grace and her mentor, Barbara Stone. And I played a clip at that time where they actually did psychic divination on, uh, on one of Amanda's live stream. And it's atrocious. So I'm going to play a clip from that. We'll, we'll close it down after that. So this is Amanda Grace, one of the worst false prophets on YouTube. And here she was the other day. She had her mentor on there. I think her name is, well, there it is, Barbara Stone. And I want you to listen to some of this because we're going to point out some of these shyster tactics here. Here we go. So with this being said, I'm going to... Um... I'm sorry, let me set this up. They're doing a live stream right here. And so I'm not sure at the time. You can see that the view count is 87,000. I'm not sure how, how many were on there. But I want you to listen to this because this bears being exposed. This is psychic tactics and this is what we read about what the old testament prophets were like and what the two witnesses will do this is supposed to be these are supposed to be prophets here i'm going to talk to the people first because i didn't get to speak to them the last time okay listen closely is there anybody on the chat whose name is martha so barbara stone who is Amanda's mentor, allegedly this incredibly, and she's like the wizard queen of, of Amanda's prophet lineage or whatever. She, uh, she starts out by saying, now this is her allegedly prophesying, is there anyone on the chat named Martha? Well, is this prophecy? Does, does God not know? Is there someone on? You think, is this God? Is, is there anyone in the chat named Martha? Now, Amanda gets between two to three to 4,000 people on her live streams at any given time. What are the odds that there's a Martha? What do you think, folks? 
Oh my goodness, this, the chat's going so fast, Barbara. Let's see. If there is a Martha, I'm telling you, they're going to pop up on the bottom of the chat. That's so funny that Amanda said, if there is a Martha. Do you think there's not? Well, hold on. If there is a Martha, there's a lot of Michelle's. There's a Maureen. Let's see. Let's see. Let me go to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, Martha. Yep, Martha Tackett Howell. There she is. Okay, Martha. You've been crying out to the Lord, and the Lord has answered your prayers. There has been physical problems. There's been financial problems. And there's... Now, did you hear what Barbara said? She's addressing this Martha, and she says very vaguely, there's been physical problems. There's been financial problems. Uh, let me get... How many people do I have in my chat right now? I've got 87 people. Uh, how many out there have had physical problems or financial problems that you, you just concluded 95, 96, 97 percent of the people you're talking to. But this is Barbara. This is allegedly prophecy, right? Been emotional problems, but God's saying, I want to heal you, my beloved daughter. And you're worried about many things. He said to sit at my feet like Mary and know that I've heard your cries. I have heard your prayers. I have heard your supplications and I am going to come to you. And I am going to de deliver to you my my abundance, saith the Spirit, because man, man will let you down. But the Lord thy God saith, I am going to give you abundance. Praise me, glorify me, worship my name. Okay, I'll stop it there because I'm nauseous. It's that sickening. This woman who can't even show her face is called on a somebody named Martha. Now, I watched this live stream. I didn't uh, have it so you could see the live stream. There was no less than six Marthas that came forth. Uh, Amanda named one of them, but I don't know why she stopped there. Because on the chat, there was six other Marthas, and then there was two ladies who offered Something like, hey, my aunt's name is Martha, or my sister's name is Martha, for a total of eight. You can go watch this yourself, and you can count them. So, why didn't Barbara here get that straight? How does God start out coming into a YouTube chat room and saying, hey, Barbara, the first thing I want you to do is check and see if there's any Marthas there, because I'm not sure. All right, this is Teresa Caputo. She's known as the Long Island Medium. And what you just watched Robin Bullock, Chris Reed, Amanda Grace, Barbara Stone doing, this is what she does. It's divination. Now, really, again, it doesn't matter whether they're getting the information off social media or, in fact, contacting familiar spirits. It doesn't matter. It's all divination. It's all evil. And as I forward to this, you can see what it does to people. It captures them emotionally while simultaneously drawing them away from the one true God. It's pure manipulation and it's evil. Now, as I conclude this video, we're seeing the actual infiltration by Christian leaders as they are the ones who introduce and bring in damnable heresies, actual witchcraft. It's the leaders who bring this to the masses to corrupt them, to shipwreck their faith. What times we live in when you see the alleged Christian leaders who are the ones who are responsible primarily for this, while the unsuspecting masses just go right along with it. Why? Why do they go along with it? Well, because they're not reading their Bibles. They don't know Christ's doctrine because they put all of their reliance upon these alleged leaders and they trust these leaders. They are shipwrecked. So if you see any of uh, these alleged prophets doing this type of thing, this is divination, this is witchcraft, this is psychic, cold reading, and fishing 
run from that place and make sure that you contend for the faith and call them out. By the way, this was prophesied that things like this would happen. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, start in verse 13. For such are a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is happening. We're seeing it happen. These devils are in disguise. So please be aware of what's happening and stand in the truth of Jesus Christ as written through his holy word.